Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Pretty good. Always look forward to uh, APL time. <laughs> nice. Hi, Wasim. Hi, Serata. Hello. I want to say hi to Joel, but I don't know how to pronounce his name. That's good enough. It's Joao, but Joao. That, that's okay. good. What uh, what uh, country is that name from? It's Portuguese. I'm Brazilian. Okay. So. Great. Uh, yeah, I came here because of a Raycast. Though, I mean, if I had known that you were having these meetings open, I would have come anyway. Ah, welcome. Thanks for joining. Course. Hi, Radek, how are you? I don't hear you. <laughs> All right. Let's start. Anybody got anything they wanted to um, mention or talk about? Uh, hopefully Radic doesn't because his <laughs> microphone's not working. You can use sign language or chat or something, I suppose. Uh, I was really been, worried yeah. that I maybe I missed a maybe I missed a lesson or something, but apparently oh, yeah. there wasn't any, so I was no. like, oh. my bad. <laughs> I was talking to JJ Allaire, we were doing uh, uh, NB Dev 2 and Quarto were coming out in like a week's time. So I decided to do a two way ask me anything with him. And that was, I scheduled it for like two hours before our time. And then we <laughs> ended up going on for such a long time that I didn't really, yeah, I was, I was, I was late enough that I then thought, okay, I, I I may as well cancel it. Otherwise, people might have come and gone and then let me out. You still don't hear me. And yes, we do hear you. Hello. Oh, you can hear me. Oh, wow. Okay. What magic button uh, did you press, Radek? I don't know. <laughs> it just started to work. There you go. Technology continues to surprise me. But uh, I just wanted to second what Tanishk said. I was also worried I missed a, uh, you know, a session because I couldn't uh, come here on Friday. And I kept looking on the forums. But what a fabulous surprise. So not only did I not miss a study session, but there will be also a, uh, you know, an, a what, interview with you or like uh, uh, to look uh -huh. forward to that that yeah. is that is what a way to start the Tuesday I wow. sent Hamill I sent Hamill you know a preview of the interview and he said he really enjoyed it so hopefully people like it cool um all right I will share my screen okay so um, a couple of things on the forum. So Adam, who has been apparently writing APL since pretty much as long as he could read or talk or something, uh, pointed out that um, the way I'm doing operators is not quite right, um, which I was kind of aware of, but I was <laughs> um, hand waving over, which I agree I should not be. Um, so let me show you what I mean. Um, So uh, operators, 
the, the issue is that operators themselves can be monadic or dyadic. So a monadic operator means that you just have a function on the left of it, whereas a dyadic operator would have a function on the left and the right. Well, not necessarily, it could be a function or an array on the left and the right and would return a function. The functions that these operators return, regardless if they're monadic or dyadic operators, can themselves be monadic or dyadic functions. Um, I guess I should also say it could be, I don't know if people would say ambivalent or ambivalent. Ambivalent sounds like they don't care to me. Um, but anyway, uh, ambivalent meaning two valences, they could be dyadic or monadic. Um, so if we look at the help, for example, They do point this out in the documentation. So operator slash Okay, so this is operator slash. So this is uh, the function being returned, which is monadic. And then I know Serata asked about this n wise reduce. Is this the dyadic version or something? No, it's not. This is something else. Uh, slash is a monadic operator with a dyadic operand. Oh, okay. So the thing that it takes is dyadic and it returns. Okay. So this one only returns a monadic function. So Rada, what is n-wise reduce? How is this different to Oh, no, this is dyadic. Oh, this, this is the dyadic function version. Okay. We don't hear you, Serata. Even though I can see. Is it? Okay. There you go. I hear you now. Oh, no, just uh, the documentation very intimidating, and I can't distinguish what is the difference between reduce and reduce and why. So. Okay. Well, in that case, this is a perfect example because <laughs> I don't know either, but I can see from here that it's a monadic versus a dyadic um, function. So what we could do is we could go all the way down to a fifth level heading here and say monadic function. And then we could have dyadic function. Okay, the monadic function is called reduce. Okay, which means we can't put the name up here anymore. Well, maybe I should put both reduce slash reduce n wise. Is that how they write it? N wise reduce. Okay. Reduce. <clears throat> Copy that. Dyadic function. N wise reduce. Okay. And so then copy. All right, um, okay, so I4, we know what that is, so it's fine. All right, what's this doing? So this is three, if we have some more examples, let me know if anybody figures out what this is doing. Oh, window sum, it seems one, two, three, two, three, four, window size of three. Oh, so this is a, yeah, so it's kind of chunking it and then adding it. Okay, that makes sense. So you've got, oh, no, it's not chunking it. I see. So we've got the numbers one to four. So it's adding the first, oh, so it's, it's doing, it's kind of like a moving mm -hmm. average, right? Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah. If I did um, uh, window sum, I guess. Huh? 
a windowed sum. A windowed sum, yes, exactly. Um, so if I did uh, three divided into, uh, turn on my APL keyboard, three divided into, uh, what's the swap thing again? This one? Yes, it's a capital T. Capital T, thank you. Um, so that would be like, yeah, that's like a moving average now, right? Mm -hmm. The average of one, two, three, the average of two, three, four. There's probably a better way to write that, but it's. Um, and then lamp is comma. Moving average. Okay. Windowed sum. Oh. Window. Well, I don't need to put it here. Put it above. Windowed sum with window of two. Oops. What does this do if you pass in an, an array as the alpha argument, like three, four or something? Um, your microphone's so loud, it's kind of like distorting. I don't know if there's a way to like move it away from your mouth or change it volume or something. Um, just FYI. Sorry, that was two, that was three. Is this better? Uh, that is better. That's actually almost too quiet, but I, that's, that's not gonna drive me quite so crazy. Yeah, say it again. Oh, I was wondering what you know this does if you pass an array as the the alpha argument like three four oh, into okay. it. Oh, okay, that's a good question. On Let's arrays, find out. Let's find out. Um, moving average. Two, three, like that. Yeah, no, they don't like it. Well, the dot say x must be a simple scalar or one item in teacher array. Okay, so cool. I don't know what's the distinction between a simple scalar and um, an item in teacher array. Um, I mean. One thing I did want to do today or soon is um, something that Adam suggested, which is to look at the rank operator, which would allow us to deal with this nicely. But for now, let's put that aside. Um, okay, yeah, so this one just is doing a sum of single things, which is not very useful. Okay, identity element. This is kind of interesting, actually, um, more of a mathematical or computer science idea, but I think we should keep it because that's part of what we're learning about um, is the idea of the ad identity element for an operation. Um, so um, so basically this is like if you want to start with a number and then add things to it, then starting with zero is the number you would want to start at to get the right answer. Zero plus a bunch of things gives you the addition of a bunch of things. But for multiply, that's not true. For multiply, you have to start with the number one. And so, um, yeah, so uh, APL seems to, to know what the identity element, at least for these operations is. Um, but that's interesting. Um, so is that uh, negative yep, go flipping the window when the scalar is negative? When the switch, sorry, where's the scalar negative? Oh, the last one? Yeah. Yeah, okay, hang on. You're getting ahead of where I'm up to a little bit. Okay, so this is just showing the example with comma, where comma means 
concatenate, whoopsie daisy. That's easy enough. And all right, so then Um, yeah, so it's just uh, flipping it around. Okay, seems reasonable. I'm not sure we need both of those. Um, and we have we done comma before? Does anybody remember? I don't remember doing it. I don't think we did. Oh, okay. Well, that's important. Not then. The best, so. um, oops, that's not the right button. Um, bit of a difficult thing to search for, but let's just do it. Comma. Yeah, no, we haven't. Okay, fine. Um, So let's do comma. I get a bit confused because I, um, you know, also do similar classes with my daughter and her friends. So I get confused about what I've done with whom, even though I'm trying to make them somewhat aligned. Um, okay, so here's comma. Presumably they call comma. Yes, they do. All right, monadic comma is called Ravel, which I saw came up on the forum. This one's called that. The nice thing is that as we do more stuff, we can increasingly use examples directly from the docs, which is nice. Okay, so paste. All right, so cube is going to be two by two by two, two by two by two. Iota eight. I guess we could print that out. Yeah, row in there as well. Oh, thank you. Two by two by two row. Iota eight. Uh. Oh no, it's just two by two. No? Okay. Oh, no, I see. Yeah. That extra axis is to show us that there's a second face. Cool. Okay, so comma just would be what we'd call flatten, I guess, in PyTorch. I think it, it will not flatten nested list nested arrays out though. Right. Which, yeah. um, I I include think, the, which I don't think PyTorch would do either. Well, PyTorch doesn't have them. And I look into the documentation, um, they are actually different from the Epsilon. Very subtle different. 
I don't think we've done epsilon yet, have we? Do you I think we think should so. do it now? Okay, well, we can do it now if that's something worth looking at. Yeah, so if we ravel that, it doesn't really do anything because it's, yeah, because it's not a, um, it's not a, it's not a um, higher rank tensor, it's a array of arrays. I guess that's worth including. And yeah, I think epsilon does flatten that out. I see. In fact, let's do a simpler one. OK. Um, dyadic, comma, oh, uh, have we talked about axes yet? Does that ring a bell to anybody? Yes. Oh, we've got them here, but we haven't talked about them. Um, hmm. um, maybe let's create a section for axes then. And so let's move these, because this is important. OK, let's move axis. up to here. Um, OK, so comma would be a 3, that would be a 4. Oh, I think the problem is my little sample one's a bit broken. Let's see, that's why that's broken. OK. This is kind of an X, this is probably kind of an operator, but never mind. Um, so axes uh, are things you put in square brackets um, after a function. Um, and it lets you apply that function over a particular axis. Um, There we are. Axes. Yeah, I think we started talking about these briefly, perhaps. Um, okay, it does not follow the normal syntax of an operator, so I'm not going to just call it a normal operator. That's why we're giving it its own spot. And it can be applied to any dyadic primitive scalar function. This looks like a good example. Okay, so so this is a function that's going to apply equals to um, columns, I guess. Um, let's see, one, four, five, one, four, five. And so the way it describes it, does it say what it is? I've found that kind of the, the way that helped me kind of understand what it's doing is with um, plus slash. Yeah. And then you use the bracket axis to have a matrix and sum over yeah. rows 
Oh, I'm hoping to do this before we do operators though, which is why I was wanting to do yeah, the sure. dyadic version. Uh, I'm just trying to find anywhere in the helps that actually say what it does. I, I'm having trouble seeing, <laughs> seeing that here. I don't think it actually says what R is, does it? That's weird. Oh, maybe this is the description. The axis operator can take a scalar dyadic. No, nope, that doesn't really tell us either. I think the APL wiki has a better. It often does. Um, yeah. Information okay. about it. Thanks. For the under reminder. function axis, if I remember right. It's got better search to uh, bracket axis. Uh, well, we're directed to branch function axis. Okay. Um, Joe doesn't exactly say what it is. It seems like like different functions have different ways that axis affects them, is that what it is? Or? Oh, is that the problem? I see, so it's hard to say exactly what it is because it varies. Okay. Okay, so I guess, yeah, this is what we're actually doing is we've got an axis with a scalar dyadic function. So plus as well equals is a scalar dyadic function. It applies, it's an infix thing, which is gonna have a scalar, can have a scalar on the left and the right. Normally it would apply element wise over the scalars. Uh, in this case, we've got an axis. So it stretches the lower rank array. So the one on the left is lower rank. This is rank one to fit the higher rank. The elements of the lower rank array are replicated. So we want to apply this column wise. So these are treated as columns. That makes sense. And so you get one, four, five equals one, three, five, and then one, four, five equals two, four, six. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right, Tanishk. I think that's the issue. That does make life a little confusing. All right, so let's use this example. Okay, so Matt. is um, two rows of three columns of that. Okay. So um, plus will be applied to columns, this is the lower rank. So it, this will become a bunch of columns of one and two. So you get one and two added to this, one and two added to this, one and two added to this, which is exactly correct. Okay, I think that makes sense. And so now what we're about to discover is that for example, Ravel has its own special behavior with an axis. Here we are, ravel with axes. K is the axis and it could be a fraction or an integer. 
or a vector or empty? Well, okay, if it's a fraction, a new length axis of length one is inserted. Okay. Oh yeah, you see the difference? We've got this, that's a bit subtle because you can't see it in the documentation, right? Because they don't actually print the boxing. So I'm glad we've got boxing on. So this is inserted a new axis between the zeroth axis and the oneth axis. Um, and I think we could use anything between zero and one, it would do the same thing. So in NumPy, that would be the equivalent of um, indexing something with, with none or np.newaxis. All right. I think the documentation tried to show it by doing row of that to show that it's- Oh, okay. Yeah, three. yeah, okay, got it. You're right, you're right. Maybe we should do that as also, just in case people don't notice the error. Access. All right. Um, If it's an integer, then it only ravels along those axes. Okay, no worries. So we're going to create something called M. Okay, is that what they had? Yes, it is. So what's happening here? Oops. Okay, so then we're raveling over axes one and two, which are these two. No, we index from one. I guess, or do we index from zero for axes? Hopefully we index from one because that's what we normally do. So that would suggest we're indexing over, raveling over these. We're left with six, four. Oh, okay, ah, okay, uh, wait. No, I'm slightly confused. This is the opposite of what I expected. So this is left the trailing axis on its own. And the first two axes have been combined. Oh, so that's what this is saying is combine these two axes. Yes, it is. You can see here, it's combining those two axes. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about that so far? I came in a bit late. Is yeah. Ravel the opposite of Unravel? Uh, I haven't done Unravel. So I have no idea, is that a thing? 
I remember reading about it, like I came across it with NumPy before and it was like something, NumPy has some kind of like a Ravel method. And I was like confused. Like, I'm not sure if that's uh, the opposite of Unravel. Oh, you mean just in English? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've never actually seen that word just by itself like that. Oh, I've not seen it in normal, <laughs> in normal. Yeah, English. it's always just Unravel something. <laughs> Uh, oh, there's Ravel, the composer. Uh, oh, here we go. Apparently it exists. To disentangle or unravel. Well, that's confusing. To become unwoven. Uh, Wait, it sounds like the same as... Sounds the same as unravel. Um, <laughs> like inflammable means flammable. <laughs> uh, so it's one of those things. <laughs> Uh, well, oh, thank you for checking the dictionary for me. <laughs> somebody said hello in the chat. Hello, Miguel. Are you able to speak or are you just on text chat today? Miguel said. I'm able to speak. I've just been lurking. All right. Yeah. Tell us what you said in the chat. Um, yeah. Um, Ravel, I, does, I do think, means the opposite of unravel. Yes. I mean, tell us what you said earlier in the chat. Uh, uh, you had something about BQN? Oh, um, yeah, I joined a while ago. I, I'm i also a fan of array programming languages and memorization techniques. So Great. I caught up with earlier sessions and I made an Anki deck for the BQN glyphs. And is that in here somewhere? It's oh, here we are. Miguel yeah. Rez's Anki deck. Yeah. Excellent. I so how long? It, um, okay, so let me just go back a bit. So probably not everybody here knows what BQN is. So do you want to tell us about BQN? So BQN is a an, another offshoot of APL. It's free and open source. And if you go to the community page there, mm -hmm. um, that's an online REPL too. So you can just try it out in your browser. And uh, there's now my Anki deck link there so that you can also learn the glyphs on the community page. Uh, where's the, sorry, you said there was a, online REPL here somewhere? Yeah. Where's um, that? Click back. Oh, you mean on here? Yeah. Um, That's a... Oh, you can, actually, this is. Yeah. I see. You can go and code that. That's nifty. So um, BQN, all I know about it really is from listening to the Arraycast episode with the creator of it, Marshall Lockburn, who used to work at BQN and from listening to the Arraycast chat with the CTO of Dialog, he described Marshall as basically wanting to go too fast. <laughs> and so Marshall left Dialog and rather than trying to turn APL into the thing he really wanted it to be, he decided to start from scratch and create a new array language to be all the stuff that he wished Dialog APL was, I guess, or wished APL was based on you know, all the things we've learned about array programming since. Um, it uses uh, its own character set, which some things look familiar to me, like down style and up style. And these ones look the same, but there's also some symbols that aren't in APL. Um, yeah, there's also something interesting where um, they use stranding for the limiting lists. So that reduces ambiguity in the yeah, language grammar. That's this one here, right? Yep. Yeah. So a stranding means uh, this. Okay. So apparently this was a huge uh, area of contention some decades ago, being able to basically do this to create an array of arrays is is called stranding. Um, and in BQN, can you can you create a list like this, or even this list would require that um, stranding character? Um, you need the stranding character. Yeah, okay. So you can't just write one space, two, place, space, three. Instead, you have to use this this thing. So uh, one, Four list. two, yeah. three. Uh, what just happened? That didn't work the way I expected. Oh, that arrow must do something different to what I thought it did. Do I have to press enter instead? No. Um, what button do I press to? Oh, shift enter. Uh, I do shift Got enter. It. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I think it took some of the ideas from J, some ideas from APL, some ideas that aren't in APL yet. 
So definitely something I'm keen to check out at some point. Um, what are your thoughts so far, Miguel, about BQN like as a language for learning array programming or, and or doing well, data analysis less, and or having fun? There's less literature than APL, which has decades. I bet. So translating a lot of the materials into BQN is interesting. <laughs> um, I enjoy it. I found it way easier to get started with because I couldn't work out how to download the APL thing and get it working on my computer. So I just started with BQN. And JL's just, I think, put a little joke in the chat, which I think I understand. He said, it's the less healthy version of APL. I assume where APL we read as apple and BQN we read as bacon. Is that the yeah. idea? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> Uh, and according to the documentation for BQN, you're not meant to call it bacon unless you're making a joke. So you are allowed to call it bacon in this situation. All right, nice. Uh, we are not as yet unraveled, I don't think. So I um, guess we should do this one now. Dyadic comma. All right, so this one looks pretty straightforward. Oh, well, not quite straightforward, actually. So we need our cube back again. Um, and then, all right, so this is just concatenate, which has folks on the chat have pointed out. Well, hang on, there's some contention here. Concatenate, Miguel wrote concatenate is the opposite of concatenate, but I think actually no, as Miguel's right, concatenate is the same as concatenate. And so I think we are, here we are concatenating four, five, six to one, two, three. And here we are taking our two by two by two cube and concatenating 99 to the kind of um, innermost axis, I guess, which presumably the documentation will explain to us. Um, oh, and then there's a different version, which is comma bar, I guess you would call that, which we should probably therefore also mention. I guess that's catenate first, is it? Yes, it is. Um, so is there anything else to know about comma bar? Comma bar. Oh, that means something else entirely, does it? Is this transpose? Gosh, what a rabbit hole. Oh, that's weird. It's uh um it's not quite transpose. That's curious. Um, all right, so catenation, concatenation with an integer or implied axis specification. They're joined along the required axis. What does that mean, the required axis? Oh, 
why does this appear at the bottom? Because you can denote the axis you want to concatenate along with the index. No, oh, the it's bracket. because this is comma bar. That's why. That's why. Yeah. The required axis, I guess, is. Uh... implied to be, ah, yes, if specified. The last axis is implied. Okay, so the so comma bar and comma are the same thing, but comma bar implies the uh, first axis and comma implies the last axis. And we write comma bar as if comma everything greater than sign yeah I see on APL card it it explains it a little like maybe exactly almost what you said Jeremy okay cool great I found comma bar to be helpful if I have a I'm working with tabular data if I have um a normal kind of data frame shape or a matrix mm -hmm. i can use comma bar to with a um vector of uh strings to print out a header row so i could see what all the oh, columns yeah. are that makes sense oh sick of standing too lazy to stand Um, okay, cool. Um, and then there's, uh, I think at this point, we don't necessarily need to explain how to use every kind of axis in every case, because it might get a bit boring. Not surprisingly, if you've got a fractional axis, it kind of works the same way. They're joined along a new axis. Well, unless it's useful for seeing an example. Um, no, that probably is useful, right? This is kind of like another way of doing what Isaac was just describing. Because here you had to already have two rows, but here you only have a vector and you want to make it into a matrix by adding the row. So this is the equivalent of stack in PyTorch um, versus cat in PyTorch. Um, so yeah, that's probably worth mentioning. Okay. All right, so shift comma, which presumably is called comma, oops, which could be called comma bar. And the monadic form of that is a um, table. Okay, which I'm pretty confused about what it's for. Maybe we should look up APL wiki just in case it knows what it's for. Table. Yeah. Apply Ravel to each major cell. So I think that's like the, the biggest, you know, subarrays. If you raise of rank one or higher, it's identical to applying Ravel to major cells. So Ravel <clears throat> will flatten, so it'll flatten each major cell. Um, I don't understand what this is doing, this uh, quad A. 
Is that like something they define or is that part of the language? Yeah. Cop A is a A to Z. Oh, okay. Well, let's put that in our string section, shall we? Cool. Good to know. All right. Um, so this is the uh, so five row on something that's 26 long is just going to give you the first five characters. And so that's A, B, C, D, E. And then um, Uh, now what's going on? This is a function. Oh, okay, it applies, this is just composition. So it applies this function and then it applies this function. So first of all, it applies the function ravel. And then it uh, this applies this function, which prints out the original argument and the shape of that argument. That's kind of nifty. So it's showing us that the a result of ra of this uh, table or Ravel items is A, B, C, D, E, and that the shape of it is 5, 1. And then here, it's showing us that comma underbar hasn't done anything as far as I can tell. Let's check. Um, okay, so that's done nothing at all. I think they could have told us that. Uh, uh, but here's Yeah, so here it's applying Ravel to major cells. So the major cells here are lists of four. The major cells here are, are vectors of four. The, the major cells here are matrices of three, four. So it's raveling those major cells, the, the, the two major cells that we have. Okay, so Let's use that example then. Okay. I'm going to write Ravel items here because I think that's easier for me to understand what that means. It's for an item, I guess they mean a major cell. So this contains two major cells, each of size three by four. And so therefore this is turning them into two length 12 major cells. It's raveling the items. Um, Scalar arguments converted to a one by one matrix. Huh. And I guess this example is useful as well, which is basically like transpose, but it's kind of adding the axis. So we should put that first. Um, actually, maybe first we should put the scalar version. Okay, so that's <laughs> that's that. Does anybody know what this is for? It's equivalent to this operation. 
which we haven't done yet, which so we should do that soon. And we haven't done that yet. It's oh, annoying. All right, so be it. So well, we should come back probably to this idea, I guess. So then we could do dyadic. Catmate first. Um, presumably this will be the same. Yes, it is. But this will be different. And presumably once we add an axis specification, it will make no difference because the only difference between them is the assumed axis specification, correct? And ditto, okay, cool. All right, we happy with that? So, um, maybe we should do um, axes with operators then. How do we find those? Okay, so dyadic mixed functions. What does that mean? Dyadic mixed functions. Oh, these are not with an operator. So the plus slash, was it Isaac was suggesting plus slash with axis? Um, how would that work? Because that's not a dyadic function. Yeah, I guess that, that's uh, maybe some this monadic. One monadic. Ah, it can be a function derived from slash. Okay. Right. So like with a matrix, you can do plus slash bracket one and then plus slash bracket two. Mm -hmm. And you'll see a row wise sum versus a column wise sum. I see. Don't see it quite defined here, but um, I guess minimum or maximum works with it too. Jeremy, you have a typo in the essay. Oh, do I? Um, magic. Um, yes, where's my typo? Go up the SC, not S. Go up. Yep. Cool. Yep. That's not a typo. That's what I want. Axes. That's the plural of axis. Oh. Okay. Maybe I should say axis rather than axes, I guess. I suppose so. Um, all right. 
well, yeah, okay, so I guess we want to we want a matrix then, is that the idea? Um, and then we would say plus slash over one, is that how we do it? Yep. Okay. And if you did a bracket two, that's kind of the same thing as the default, which would be, you know, get you the same 615, I think. Um, just a moment, my daughter wants me. Actually, maybe that's a good time to go. All right, cool. Thanks, gang. See you next time. Have a good one. Bye. Yeah.